Let's pick up tonight where we left off on Friday night, which was our state Senate giving the green light to legalize recreational pot. Next up, a joint conference committee that still is a little punny. Come on, that will work out the differences that remain in the House bill and the Senate bill. Both again have passed to make those into one super bill to vote on before the end of the session. If that super bill, as I'm calling it, passes, Governor Walls is expected to sign it into law. All of those things are expected to happen. And when they do, cannabis won't just become legal. Those impacted by the old cannabis laws will be eligible for their records to be expunged or sealed. We wanted to take a closer look at that aspect of this legislation today. And Kent, it's worth mentioning this has broad support as well. Yeah, it does, Jenna. Legislators from both parties have acknowledged how even low-level marijuana charges on your record can act as barriers to employment, renting, and even obtaining a loan. To remedy that, both bills call for automatic expungement of certain misdemeanors and review of some other more complicated cases. But experts say setting all of this right will take time. When Minnesota officially opens the door to recreational cannabis, it will begin opening different kinds of doors for people with certain criminal records. Cannabis crimes that are not felony level and that were nonviolent, did not involve a weapon. According to the Minnesota Bureau of Criminal Apprehension, there are more than 66,000 Minnesotans automatically eligible to have those kinds of misdemeanors sealed. It's also important to transition those people. But Laylee Fadahi, campaign manager for Minnesota is Ready, says automatic does not mean immediate. Their record will be expunged as soon as it is identified, but that work of identifying the individual, that's going to take some time. It's not as easy as snapping your fingers. Nope, unfortunately it is not. Yana Herdinova has spent years tracking state expungement efforts as director of the Drug Enforcement and Policy Center at The Ohio State University. Especially if you're going backwards into the history, you know, that, that gets really complicated and it can take years to put it into practice. That's because they're not just sealing convictions of those 66,000 eligible Minnesotans, just 9,800 of those cases resulted in convictions. The other 57,000 represent cases that were stayed or dismissed. When you say a person with a criminal record, you imagine somebody who has been convicted. But that's actually not accurate. People who have been arrested and charges were never proven or they were even dismissed, that stays on people's records. And that impacts records of black Minnesotans the most. A 2020 study by the ACLU found that they are 5.4 times more likely than white people to be arrested for marijuana possession statewide, despite both groups reporting similar usage rates. And no matter who is impacted, keep in mind, determining who's eligible is just the beginning. There are different agencies that own these records, and you have to notify all agencies that they have to close or you know seal their records, you also have to let the person whose record was sealed know that their record was sealed so they don't continue to put on their employment application that they have a you know offense. And notifying people when you might not have an updated address presents another level of challenge. And automatic expungement is just the beginning. According to the BCA, there are an additional 230,000 Minnesotans with nonviolent felonies. Those individuals can petition. Who will soon be eligible to apply to have their records sealed through a new cannabis expungement board. That's a lot of people whose lives will hopefully be handing back to them. Again, that larger group of 230,000 Minnesotans would need to apply to have their more complicated felony cases reviewed. And that's significant because Yana says she's found that only about 6% of people actually apply, which is why that automatic expungement of those misdemeanor crimes is so much more impactful and also takes so long, Jana. Kent, it sounds like she's been studying this for some time around the country. Are there success stories, even though it takes a while in other states? Well, yeah, and she says it doesn't mean that this isn't really important work. It's just that it takes time to go through that. Like she said, even to let people know that it's happened, because you can imagine the confusion if you don't know if you should check a box or not mm -hmm. on an employment application and then things don't match. I mean, that could disqualify someone. So that is a really important piece. Okay, Kent, thank you so much. Very interesting.